All right, what's up, Savages? So today we're here with Brian Hartman, Chief Instructor, and a bunch of other titles uh, at PFC. Uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how you normally carry off-duty. But before we get into that, can you tell our Savages at home a little bit about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. A uh, 25-year uh, mix of military and law enforcement uh, background. I spent the last 12 years of that here with Progressive Force Concepts, uh, where I serve as their Chief Instructor and Executive uh, Vice President. We spend the majority of our time trading military special operations units for pre-deployment, as well as a number of other SWAT teams. Myself and my uh, curriculum, are, uh, my teammates are on uh, cadre with a number of different tactical officers associations as well. So okay. it keeps us pretty busy, both domestically and internationally. Wow, sounds like you guys got your hands full here. We do. Super interested in this particular bag. Um, Absolutely. I know a little bit about it, but I was hoping you can share share about this bag with some of our viewers at home. Absolutely. So this is uh, this is what we call the Bob or the ballistic off-body bag, and its uh, its origin essentially comes uh, straight out of operations. So uh, we probably run probably about 400 uh, protective operations globally per year, and one of the things that those operations were forcing us to do was to carry off-body. The primary thing we did was we would get a computer bag, we would get a messenger bag, and we would take that to the local luggage repair guy or seamstress. We would take a holster and we would say, can you put this inside of the bag in, in some way, shape, or form? And it worked, but it never fully worked. It was always kind of a, kind of a problem looking for, uh, looking for an answer. So, uh, so we realized that the only way to successfully make that system work was to start from the ground up. Mm -hmm. We had to take and design a completely purpose-driven bag. So the first order of business was had to be non-tactical. So no multicam, no uh, no craziness, no olive drab, no coyote brown, no anything. No massive grid of molly webbing, no Velcro everywhere for patches, none of those things. So it had to be low visibility. Uh, next, it had to be uh, very quick to take and deploy and intuitive to take and work. Also, if we were going to be carrying off the body, uh, it had to be capable of carrying a number of other things. And when we saw that in the dimensions of the bag, we realized, number one, we were capable of carrying a full-size weapon, which is a, a big driver when guys carry concealed. They'll typically carry something smaller than they would ultimately prefer mm -hmm. because of comfort and concealability. Sure. Also, there's a lot of equipment that we tend to not carry when we're running concealed. So we don't carry body armor, we might not carry a full med kit, might not carry door stops, an intermediate force option, flashlight, mm -hmm. multitude of different things. So Absolutely. if we have a bag that's large enough to accommodate all those items, we can, uh, we can be better equipped uh, for the fight if, uh, if it should present itself. Very quick to don and doff, and the end result after probably about five prototypes was, uh, was this bad boy right here. So the way that the system works, I'm a left-hander, so I carry it uh, slightly off on my, uh, my left-hand side, and it's great because uh, in an innocuous fashion, this is kind of a forest screen, and I can carry my keys mounted directly on it. The way I'm going to deploy the bag, my support hand is going to come over and grab keys, carabiner, pull ring, whatever the end user wants to take and ideally use, and it's going to pull that hand down towards their support side hip, which opens the front flap of the bag in a downward fashion, exposing the firearm essentially in an appendix carry at that point, which is then clearly drawn and then just comes up into, into our workspace. Once that bag is open, a few, uh, a few features and uh, elements to this here. The lower panel has a large uh, Velcro uh, pad on it. And the idea behind that is for CCW credentials, law enforcement credentials, anything. It would really suck Genius. to win the initial fight and then first responders arrive and then we wind up getting injured in a, in a blue on blue type incident. So we don't want to see that happen. Uh, Molly grid that's inside here is uh, ideal for a left or a right handed holster. And obviously, as you can see, because of the size of that panel, can fully accommodate, in this case, a Glock 17, even one with an RDS on it or a, uh, or a, a flashlight, a visible white light that's attached as well. So that's, that's pretty nice. The first letter in Bob is ballistic, and both the upper and the lower flaps of the bag contain a level 3A ballistic, uh, ballistic panels. Now we know when a uh, ballistic vest gets that 3A rating, it has to do with the manner in which it's fitted and worn on the body, and we understand that these are in fact loose. Our philosophy is something is better than nothing. So Absolutely. having any protection, if I can get a coat hanger in between me and the bad guy, I'm gonna take it and do it. Once that bag is deployed open, if the end user has time, the ability, or, or wants to, they can swim the dominant arm out, pull these two risers, and that will elevate the bag up onto the chest. So we then have six inches by nine of ballistic protection on the, uh, the thoracic cavity, as well as on the pelvic girdle. Inside of the bag that's located on the back here, 
people can put anything they want to in there. Again, we have another ballistic panel. This is our uh, proprietary Bob medical kit, which is vacuum sealed and contains all that kind of good stuff. And again, magazines, flashlights, doorstops, Skittles, anything that uh, anything that floats your boat that you want to ultimately have uh, have inside of there. So uh, pretty straightforward and simple. Again, closing it back up and uh, and sort of setting the bag back up for uh, for deployment. Firearm goes back inside. The flap comes over the top, just like so. Closes. We resecure that Velcro, and then the flap goes directly over the top, and we're uh, we're concealed again. I always say that uh, at home, if we had to take and step out of the house for a moment with the kids, with the wife, whatever it was, and we talk ourselves into things and out of things, the novelty of carrying a gun concealed wears off quickly. Folks don't want to go through the the garbage and the nonsense of oh, I got to thread this through my belt loops and and do all this sort of stuff. The other thing is. Think about working out. We work out, we have workout shorts on. There are no belt loops. Mm -hmm. So how do we take and carry a firearm? And do we just loosely carry on a clip that could flop around and fall off? This sits on my banister at home, and from a completely unarmed, unequipped standpoint as I am right now, that coming off the banister and going over my shoulder and in three, two, one, gun, armor, medical, Identification, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The other location where the uh, where the bob really, really, and truly shines is uh, is inside of a vehicle. We spend a considerable amount of time in the car if we're concealed, learning how to take and defeat seat belts, slouching, and then sitting up to clear the elbow on the back of the seat. All of that is completely irrelevant when we just buckle in. We pull that bag directly over the top of the belt, and it sits right square in your lap. And from there, it's a matter of just pulling open and presenting the gun. Stupid, simple, intuitive to use, and uh, we love it. And it's deployed by quite a few uh, quite a few folks that are downrange right now doing work with it. I've even taken, uh, this is a demonstration model, but I've taken mine and overtly put patches on it that have nothing to do with firearms. I've seen guys who put a Microsoft patch, an Apple computer patch, a, uh, an iPad even. You look at the dimensions and the size of the bag, it really is consistent with that, and it doesn't even, it doesn't even get a second glance. That's a genius idea. Now you mentioned something earlier, I had an opportunity to talk to you. I'm not gonna lie, I have fallen into that trap. I have fallen sure. into the trap, you know, when you first become a law enforcement officer, you're oh, I get to carry all the time, and it's super cool, and same thing with the CCW holder, and then that novelty wears off really quickly. Absolutely. So it's like, yeah, I'm just gonna run to the store real fast and get some milk, it's not a big deal, and you know, my business partner's all over me, because you know, he just got a CCW probably about a year ago. Of course. Like, you're not gonna carry, and I'm like, well, you know, um, so I can definitely see the benefit there. Absolutely. Um, and that's going to the store, that's pretty far away, but you mentioned like, hey, oh, we need to take trash cans out. Nighttime and taking the trash cans out. I always use that as, a, as an example of this, that, uh, that it's 1 a.m., my neighborhood is Tuesday's garbage day, it's 1 a.m., Monday night, about to go to bed, and uh, have them take the garbage cans to the curb, and you're in nothing but boxer shorts, and I gotta get those, those cans out. That's the time of day when bad things happen, mm -hmm. and we throw our flip flops on, and we go out and take those cans, and we're unarmed, unequipped, and bad things could happen in your in your driveway while you're out there. There is no excuse. It removes the excuse from the equation, and, and we all fall guilty and fall into that trap of telling ourselves, "I'm probably not going to need that firearm on it." But if you think about it in these terms, imagine if if you're jumping out of an airplane. And you sit in the airplane and you say, I don't think I'm going to need my reserve shoe today. It's a preposterous assumption as though you can see into the future and that you can tell that there's nothing of a uh, confrontational nature that's going to happen there. You right. don't know that. There is no way of determining that based solely upon the venue. Uh, so it's, it's a ridiculous trap. That goes beyond this product. That's just a terrible trap for anybody to fall into. No, you're right. A mindset issue of saying it's probably not going to happen today, so I won't do this. Um, but it, it takes that excuse away from the individual. Is it perfect and ideal for all situations? Absolutely not. Does it fill a gap? Does it fill a considerable gap? Yes, it does, and it makes it ridiculously easy. Here in the summertime in Las Vegas, it gets to 120 degrees. Absolutely. In a pair of board shorts with no belt loops, sandals, and a tank top, not a belt loop in sight, we can carry all and then more equipment mm -hmm. on our person. So. I think that's a pretty great thing. Now, is this bag offered to everybody? Because the only time I've ever seen somebody carry something similar to that was when I was in the Border Patrol a number of years ago, and our Bortac operators carried that when they were like plain clothes going yeah. out and doing yes, things. Absolutely. Yes, it is. It's open for uh, open for civilian sale. If you go to our website, pfcloadout.com, uh, it's a direct order. You go on there. First, you'll pick a color. This again is forest green. It's also available in navy blue, black, and a gray. Mm -hmm. uh, then next, you'll pick what is your model firearm. Are you a lefty or a righty? Do you have a light attached to it, etc. Obviously, for the most common firearms, things like Glock 17s, Glock 19s, we have those in stock. Those are ready to go. If you have a more exotic 
style forearm, there might be a little bit of lead time on getting a custom holster made. So the holster comes with it. Holster comes with it. All in on the bag is essentially the bag, which comes with the armor panels. We know how much armor is expensive as well. So bag, armor panels, and a custom holster. Uh, if one does want to take in, get the medical kit for the inside, that's a that's an additional. And they can add all those on. Add them on. Absolutely. Wow, that's awesome. All right, so we'll put a link to that on this That'd video. Fantastic. So that uh, any of you guys watching out there, I know I'm super interested, and in, we might see if we can pick one up today Beautiful. before we leave here. Awesome. Um, so we really appreciate you taking the time My to pleasure. show us this stuff. All your guys pretty much carry this when they're. They do. I would say uh, I'd say conservatively, this is probably my go-to about ninety percent of the time when I'm carrying. I think that's what Chad was saying too. Yeah, absolutely. We really appreciate you taking the time out I'm of your pleased. schedule. Great I know you're a busy guy. Thank you guys. Thank hey, you. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and as always, stay savage.